presented it at ASA, and Alan Vinnie was presenting his uh, uh, techniques at that, and we were next to each other <laughs> in many of these exhibits, and we got very friendly. So by 73, 74 come along, and uh, we had all these things. We tried to publish it in anesthesiology. They won't do it. Mm. And uh, the only journal which will accept us is in anesthesia analgesia. So all our articles were published in anesthesia analgesia. Sure. And I got very nasty comments from uh, editors of anesthesiology. Oh, regional anesthesia, oh, that's not science. Huh. And I looked into uh, but all the journals in the world who were publishing regional anesthesia, maybe Scandinavia, maybe in England, none of them were. Hmm. And none of them in even in pediatrics. So here we said, why isn't anybody publishing on regional anesthesia? And the answer was, they were not interested. It is too small a thing hmm. for anesthesia. It's not a big thing. And that is one of the reasons why Ellen and I, and then later on Don Breidenbaugh, mm -hmm. but Harold Karen was already working in some areas. And we hadn't met, but we were talking, but Ellen and I were talking about that. And that was the reason we got together in one of the ESA meetings and said, okay guys, if you're going to have regional anesthesia go further, somebody has to teach somebody in the residency program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was the reason we said we have to form a society to tell them what regional anesthesia is. So we went to Bonica, we went to uh, Philip Bromwich, we went to Hinkson, we went to um, a couple of other stalwarts who were really practicing regional anesthesia. They said, oh yeah, we'll support you. You go ahead. We won't be active with you, but we can advise you. And so that's how the first meeting occurred. Who would you consider a mentor? My mentor is Bonica. But when I started doing regional anesthesia, uh, and then got into pain management as well. Mm -hmm. uh, soon after that, uh, it became, uh, there was nobody there uh, who knew more about pain than Bonica. Mm -hmm. In 1969, there was no places where you can know about pain. And so I read Bonica's book. And then I followed what he had written in all these areas. I was very much interested in uh, conditions like reflex mm -hmm. sympathetic dystrophy at that time. Mm -hmm. And so he was my uh, uh, guru, even though from, and then I met him many times. Uh, and uh, he, I have followed everything he said, mm -hmm. what he believes in it, his physiology, his pathology, this is a multidisciplinary uh, with what I, I accept. Regional anesthesia gave that extra protection that if you're so sick, regional anesthesia can still go through an operation. That is the major difference. Better safety, better precautions, better post-operative care, better pain relief mm -hmm. after the surgery. So regional anesthesia always have a special place mm -hmm. for a group of people, children, uh, uh, people living longer, people in a lot of disability, people cannot afford to have their heart being touched upon by general anesthesia. For those people, regional anesthesia will always be there. An intolerant pain made tolerable by your action is what I want. Mm -hmm. ASRA is a conduit through which 
could be able to change your specialty in anesthesia to teach the people who are ready to be taught to become very impactful in the lives of other people. It's the teaching tool which ASR had created, which was never there before. When I started in 1975, I was the uh, uh, chairman of the education committee. Okay. okay. So the question was, we were experts doing regional anesthesia. Who's, how are we going to teach the others? And the concept that you had to teach it next to the patient came from ASRA. Mm -hmm. There were no such things before. The origination, if you really want to go, was ESRA. I'm very proud of ASRA. You should be. Uh, having, having grown the way it has. Mission of ASRA, which was to educate, has really been the real strength. How to teach, how to do the workshops, how to teach them in the area of the operation, as well as, and then the devel development of pain and getting that together has been wonderful. So that pain management, perioperative care, postoperative care, obstetrics, can you imagine obst obstetrics before the ESRA? No. You know, I didn't find anybody doing epidurals for babies in 1969. Right. Uh -huh. It was a rarity. <laughs> so look at that. That is a standard of care. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to be really, really proud, you know, not only now, but 50 years from now, sure. what we have done, our uh, emphasis should be, can we now take it to the rest of the world in Africa? Right. And somebody has to make some uh, effort to do that. Otherwise, I think, you know, it's wonderful.